why are we interested in integrated care and acute demand management? Um, I think the people have now got a much greater understanding of the reasons for this than they had a few years ago. Essentially, pressures on health systems in developed countries are intensifying. Demand is going up and supply constraints are becoming much more evident every day. The most obvious of these are around funding, but there are also issues around access to a skilled workforce and uh, some supply side pressures coming from new t technologies which make health systems able to keep people alive for longer at greater cost, which is a good thing, but it just increases the cost pressure. So demand's going up, supply side constraint, and those two things together start to raise some very difficult questions about the, 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 the sustainability of health system infrastructure. And out of that comes this notion of the burning platform. Um, anybody who, who's, who's wondered about where that analogy comes from, this is where it comes from. It's the oil industry, and it's knowing um, the right time to jump. At what stage do we evacuate as it gets hotter and hotter and hotter? Uh, yes, you can attempt to put the fire out, but of course, in most cases, that's not an option. So, so the question is, um, uh, what's the burning platform in health, and what's the health system going to do about it? Essentially, the health burning platform, or my hypothesis anyway, is that we simply can't afford to carry on as we are, which is essentially increasing hospital and residential care ca capacity. As the population grows, as the population ages, as chronic d d d disease uh, gets more prevalent and uh, presents itself as comorbidities, we simply can't carry on building more hospital capacity. And even if we could, it's not the right thing to do because it's not going to have the impact on population health outcomes and inequalities that our nations aspire to. So if we're going to deal with this um, sustainability issue, it's going to require a whole system response. In other words, demand's going to increase. If we're not going to grow hospitals to take more and more of that demand, then we've got to shift that demand somewhere. Where do we shift it to? We shift it to primary and community settings. And if we're going to do that, we've got to increase the capacity in that primary and community system um, in order to cope with that increased role. And uh, this will happen at a time when health systems are dealing with two things at the same time. One is dealing with today's demand pressures, in other words, people with uh, uh, highly advanced risk factors for long-term conditions or diagnosed disease. And at the same time, looking out, they've got to be dealing with the next generation and uh, factors like obesity and thinking about how do we get in early to try and stop those people being the big users of the health systems in 20 years' time. It's a very difficult uh, problem. And a lot of the reason for the advent of integrated care as a concept is about dealing with these problems. So acute demand, as we all know, it's everybody's problem. For those of you who can't read this, it says, sure glad there's no hole in this end. Um, now, that's obviously a fallacy. One takes this into the health system, the sustainability challenge is one for everybody. Acute demand at the hospital end actually is a shared problem. Primary care can sit there and think, oh, I made the right career choice, didn't I? Look at those poor people working in the hospital. But actually, the problem's going to impact on them, and similarly, the solution is part of, primary care needs to contribute to the solution. <coughs> 